Both sides of this recall have always made it clear the results of this election will be based on voter turnout. Our political reporter, Greg Lee, has been following the polls, the numbers, and the candidates, and he joins us now to break down this critical election day. Greg. Julie, good evening. You will hear the same thing from all the candidates today, including the governor. The polls, the predictions, they don't mean anything on election day. All that matters are the voters and what they decide about the future leadership of this state. In these final hours, we spoke to strategists on either side of the aisle about what worked, what didn't, and what to expect tonight. As Californians await the results of the gubernatorial recall election, both Democrats and Republicans remain confident in their desired outcome. Governor Newsom has managed to bring the Democrats home. Uh, he has managed to nationalize this election, making it less than a referendum on him and more a referendum on national politics. The fact that the recall has made it as far as it has, and we're here on election day, don't know what the outcome will be, uh, that, uh, that tells you something. Stephen Maviglio is a Democratic consultant who worked for former Governor Gray Davis, who was removed by a recall election in 2003. He said the work Democrats did to close the enthusiasm gap with a hand from national figures like President Biden has given Newsom the boost he needed. They really called out the cavalry nationally, uh, they had a really great ground campaign, and those things combined with an overwhelming cash advantage uh, led to what I believe will be a pretty resounding victory. Former California Republican Party Chairman Ron Nearing sees the strategy differently. Like Newsom's opponents, he criticizes the governor for nationalizing the race instead of focusing on the management of the state. Gavin Newsom's out of ideas, which is why he's had to make this recall about other people. It's astonishing that he brought in you know, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, uh, you know, etc. The two strategists do agree on one thing. They believe conservative radio host Larry Elder entering the race actually hurt the recall and helped Newsom. Larry Elder is the personification of what could go wrong if a Republican was elected. There's no doubt that Larry Elder's candidacy has been hurting the recall. We know that because we know that uh, as Larry Elder's numbers went up, the support for the recall went down. As they prepare to watch the returns, both Maviglio and Nearing predict the outcome will reverberate throughout the state and beyond into 2022. If he has a double digit win, that is a mandate to continue doing what he's doing. It also sets him up for a strong reelection next year because he's consolidated all the Democrats. Win or lose, uh, the leader of the California Democratic Party, which is Gavin Newsom, is deeply unpopular. He has big problems within his own coalition. Some history for you. The last time California had a recall election, 2003, 55% of voters decided to remove then Governor Gray Davis, a Democrat. His replacement, we all know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There may be no person who understands more of what Governor Newsom is feeling tonight than Davis. Here's what he told me about those recall election night nerves. Election nights are always uh, involve a little anxiousness, a little nervousness, but that's because you've done all you can do. Uh, you've got the message out. You, you've gotten the boat out. You've done everything humanly possible. You kept the pedal to the metal. Uh, but now you just have to wait. It's like waiting for a jury to come back with a verdict. You just have to wait, wait for the verdict of uh, California voters. Former Governor Davis told me he's confident Newsom will survive this recall. He said regardless of the outcome, though, the most important thing for Newsom is to be humble and be gracious to voters. Julie. So, Greg, a couple of hours left to go, less than two now before those polls close. And then early returns start coming in. What will you be looking for? Yeah, Julie, so here's what we know about that first dump of numbers at about 8 p.m. or shortly thereafter polls closing. Democrats are, are certainly outpacing Republicans in terms of mail-in ballots, and that's what that first number will be from. And so we're looking for what the difference is or what the skew is after those first results because we know very well after some of the rhetoric around mail-in voting from the 2020 presidential election that Republicans were more likely to vote in person today. In fact, the Berkeley IGS poll shows that 77 percent of people who said they were going to vote in person are going to vote yes on the recall. So not only are we obviously going to be interested in that first number of mostly mail-in ballots, but certainly the numbers start to come out throughout the night about in-person voting. And if those that are yes on the recall can close whatever gap those first numbers show us. Yep. And if you haven't done so, there is still time to vote. Greg, thank you. And